We begin on the edge tonight with breaking news from downtown Detroit. Firefighters have their hands full with a building that was fully engulfed in flames. We've learned one person was taken to the hospital. Box News' Dave Spencer has been there now for some time and uh, gathering information. Dave, what have you learned? Yeah, we learned that one person was taken to the hospital, but they're still searching to make sure that that was the only person involved. Uh, right now, the flames are pretty much under control. There's still smoke rolling up from the building. It can be difficult to see because it is uh, pretty dark over here. Now, this was an old nightclub that's been vacant for some time right here at the corner of 10th and 4th Street. That's right downtown. That's right across from the uh, giant post office building right here. Uh, what we're told is uh, just before 10 o'clock is when the flames were visible, getting someone's attention who then called 911, bringing the fire trucks out out here uh, with two ladder trucks that are still out here putting flames at uh, putting water from a, from the top attacking it from uh, up top meanwhile uh, periodically we'll see people bringing out hoses trying to get it from the street level here again one person was found inside there there's there's no use for this building right now it's vacant so it's believed that person was uh, somehow squatting or uh, trespassing in that building when he was found as he was being taken out and uh, taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation he mentioned that there was somebody else with them that he uh, was unaccounted for. So he relayed that information to firefighters. Firefighters did a search, but they said because of uh, the, the situation and the fact that there were so many flames visible, uh, so hot, they couldn't gain entry and they still have not been able to gain entry. And at this point, uh, they don't think it's really structurally sound to do so. Uh, so they're cautiously optimistic that there's nobody else involved that that person may have taken off down the street. Regardless, they're still uh, treating it as if there was a possible second person in there. Uh, so they're still putting water on this, and hopefully they will uh, get to the point where they feel comfortable, try to go inside, see what's in there. Uh, in the meantime, they're waiting for a, a demolition crew to come out here and knock this building down. They say there's no way to salvage anything inside there. that will have to be knocked down, so it uh, could be a long night for them. No uh, other reports of any other injuries, including to the firefighters who were earlier just on the roof of that building uh, trying to tackle this from all different angles. Uh, as soon as we learn information on this, uh, we'll bring it to you. Reporting live in downtown Detroit, Dave Spencer on the Edge. And Dave, this is not a structurally sound building. It's an older building. It's certainly not safe for firefighters, yeah. and they have their challenges cut off for them tonight. Oh, most definitely, and that's why we see so many here. We see uh, these two giant ladder trucks here that are, uh, you know, they've been going constantly, and then periodically they'll be trying to pick up other hoses. They just want to make sure they can get this under control and then really figure out uh, what they're dealing with in terms of the scope. Yeah, we know they're working hard tonight. Thanks, Dave, for the update. Well, also tonight, a viral video from Detroit catches the attention of the chief of police. Well, look at this. Children are seen hanging out the windows of a moving car as an aunt records it all for social media. Let's get to Fox 2's Jessica Dubnyk. She joins us live with more on the video that has so many people shaking their heads. You don't have to be a parent to look at this and go, what is going on here? Yeah, Roop and Taryn, I finally found something we can all agree on, and I gotta be honest, this does not look great. You'll see the rest of the video in a minute. Now, for the woman, the Detroit woman, who thought that this was a good idea at the time, we actually talked to her tonight, and she says she's had a change of heart. Oh, I, was, I was appalled. Yeah, it's hard not to be, but you decide. You ready, Riley? That's the kid's aunt behind the wheel on her cell phone. In one frame, she has a toddler age child in her lap, hands on the wheel, the rest hanging out of the windows on an east side Detroit street. The video gone viral, even sent to Detroit's top cop. But I mean, I, looking at it, I was, you know, fearful for the kid's safety, number one, but just it's outrageous. Immediately, DPD launched an investigation, landing on the doorstep of Asha. She doesn't want her last name used. What do you want to clear up? I want to clear up that I am remorseful. I, I, first of all, I like to say I already apologized to the parents of the kids. You'll notice during our interview, she was live on social media. She says she's been viral before for all kinds of things, even her tattooed freckles on her cheeks. And here we go again. Hold on, Janaya. <laughs> As you saw with one of the kids, it looked like uh, the child was about to lose her balance on one of the turns. Um, that just could have been disastrous. None of the children were hurt. We put together a safety plan. We contacted Child Protective Services. Um, we're confident that the children are not in any danger. She tells Fox 2 she spends a lot of time with the five kids. After this video is taken, she says they made TikTok videos and went skating. She wants to be clear they were only going about two miles per hour. My family is willing to vouch. They were to go to war behind me and do whatever. 
whatever it takes to show that I'm a great auntie. There is no unposting this, and it could all lead to charges. I do regret uh, letting them hang out the window. I definitely do feel sorry for that because it, it, it could have went badly, definitely. I suppose we are all entitled to an error in judgment. We'll see if uh, Detroit police investigators see it that way. We asked Chief White about the investigation. All he would say, it is very much open and very much ongoing. Reporting live on Detroit's west side, Jessica Dupnack on the edge. Yeah, as you talk about making a bad decision, even she said, hey, this was a bad decision, but you wonder about these kids and the lessons they're learning from this aunt who she, they spend so much time with. Uh, if, if they think that this is cool or okay and, and to just be posting things someone needs to correct that too and quickly absolutely cps it is on their radar they actually did a welfare check of the kids yesterday along with detroit police all of the kids are accounted for their parents have been put on notice and of course that ongoing investigation possibly leading to criminal charges all right we know you'll keep on top of this one jessica dupe thank for us live tonight unbelievable thank you well, looking at these images, it's hard to believe someone could walk away from this small plane crash uninjured. The single engine plane was coming in for a landing on a private airfield in Green Oak Township. We're told a gust of wind caused it to tip. The left wing got caught on a tree limb and then the plane got stuck. The 72 year old pilot was the only one on board. Amazingly, he was able to climb down safely. It is mid-February, and our weather is pretty quiet around here and pretty beautiful. I'd say today was a, a picture-perfect day for February. Yeah, it really was. But we can't say the same, though, for the Northeast, which is preparing for several inches of snow. And, uh, Richard, are we expecting any of that here? Uh, no, thankfully. Uh, we're going to stay dry for Tuesday and for Wednesday. But here's this big storm moving through uh, the south, now making a turn through the mid-Atlantic. And this will be producing accumulating snow for New York City and Hartford, also for Boston, Scranton, Pennsylvania. They're all going to be dealing with snow tomorrow morning. So if your travel plans take you to the east, get ready for some slowdowns. Around here, we had plenty of sunshine today. Still mostly clear skies out there, although we're starting to see some high clouds come in from that southern system. Here's that footprint of snow for late tonight and for tomorrow morning along the Pennsylvania Turnpike, east of Harrisburg, northern New Jersey, including the Big Apple, and then up into southern New England, including Boston. Could be four to six inches of snow. That's not coming in our way 42 and 27 your official high and low we did have all that sunshine today it felt pretty nice here are your averages there are the records sunset is getting later and the sunrise getting earlier now that we're heading uh, ever closer to the first day of spring there is a very light breeze out of the uh, south and southwest but it is a cool evening for the middle part of february 38 chicago 28 newberry there's 29 for us 33 up at the tip of the thumb in port hope so watch that coastal storm tomorrow morning there it is there's going to be rain and snow, and that is quickly exiting. For us, it's going to be dry the next couple days. Then here comes our next weather maker. This will bring some rain and a bit of wet snow for us on Thursday. You'll see it all in the seven-day forecast. For the rest of tonight, just some fair weather clouds, cool and dry. We're down to 28. Tomorrow, not quite as warm. We won't have as much sunshine. It'll be breezy at times. This is tomorrow, 38 for a high. And then check out that seven-day forecast. 39 Wednesday, that's Valentine's Day. Day. There's that light mix on Thursday, but it's going to be damp. We will likely be in the lower 40s, and then it does cool off for the weekend ahead. Perhaps some flurries on Saturday. President's Day is down the road, 42. Roop and Taren, how about a full check of the numbers at 4 a.m.? All right. Thanks, Rich. A Ferndale 15 year old fighting for his life tonight after being shot in the head. It happened after a group of teens were left alone at a hotel in Southfield. Southfield police telling us the adult rented five underage teens a room at the Weston Hotel. On Sunday morning, the teen was shot inside the room. Police say they found two guns tucked in another teen's pants. One of the guns was reported stolen out of Flint in 2022. The second weapon was unregistered. Right now, you got a mother grieving. You have other family members grieving. You have students who are grieving because, from my understanding, he was very popular within the school. The victim attends Loyola High School. The Southfield Police Chief says the suspect may face additional charges. The adult who rented the room has not been named. Well, tomorrow, Michigan State University marks one year since that deadly shooting on campus where three students lost their lives. And tonight begins a week of remembrance at MSU, including a vigil tomorrow. Here's Fox 2's Dave Kinchin.
Breslin Center is normally a place for MSU students to celebrate the good times, but now it's a place of healing. They're coming in from all over campus to grab luminaries to light up Spartan Nation green in honor of their three fellow students shot and killed on campus and several others hurt one year ago Tuesday. There's no one way to feel. There's no right way to heal. Um, that's something I've definitely realized. It's why Emily, the student body president and her campus government colleagues, put together this event where members of the community can get illuminated decorate them and place them outside their home, turning the dark nights green to honor 20-year-old Alex Werner, 19-year-old Ariel Anderson, and 20-year-old Brian Frazier. But some people want to be with others at this point. Others want to be completely by themselves, and that's completely okay, and I think it's just really important that we validate that. Berkey Hall is already lit up in Spartan Green. It's where Alex and Ariel were killed and several others were hurt. Fox 2 cameras were there as MSU police paid a tribute of their own. There's already a lot of emotion surrounding this week. I think even more be evident when I see all those luminaries lit. Um, to me, all those luminaries coming together just shows the light and the power of the Spartan community and that regardless of what's happened to us, the power and the sense of community we have here at Michigan State is not going to be dimmed by an act of tragic violence that should have happened, should never have happened here in the first place. Meantime, here at Lot 62, we're north of Spartan Stadium. This is where the main remembrance will be Tuesday night. Come along, I'll give you a look. You can see everything is set up with all of these tents. There will be some warming units here to keep people warm. This whole area will be full of emotion during that powerful tribute. Right now is like the right time to like be there for the people you care about. Um, and the only way to get through this is through like the people who know what you're going through. And while the community remembers, life is much different with more locks on campus doors, more security cameras, and university buildings locked down after 6 p.m. But we're told that's not the only thing that's different. I think the biggest change, though, is within like the students. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of us feel a little bit of fear now walking around campus. Everybody's kind of always looking over their shoulders, so it's an unfortunate change that we've all had to go through. In East Lansing, Dave Kinchin on the Edge. Well, former President Donald Trump coming to Michigan for a get out the vote rally. He'll be at the Elite Jet Center in Waterford Township this Saturday night. Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to delay his election interference trial and ultimately find him immune from prosecution for decisions made while he was president. His lawyers filed emergency appeal with the high court after the justices heard Trump's separate appeal to remain on the presidential ballot despite attempts to kick him off. A Michigan lawmaker who was criticized for endorsing a racist post on social media has been removed from committee assignments. We first reported it last week. Representative Josh Shriver, an Oxford Republican, appeared to support a racist theory shared by a right-wing activist on X called the Great Replacement Theory. The theory falsely asserts there's an active and covert effort to replace white populations. Shriver will be allowed to cast votes in the House.